Go ahead, take it over for a few minutes. These are going to be an echo the whole time. Really. It's bad enough I got to hear myself once, I don't want to hear it twice. <laughs> I'm just recording it for others to listen to later. Yeah. Okay, good evening, everyone. I am Brenda Yokepa Moses. I am a proud resident of Ka'u. I live in Pahala. Um, I'm also um, the deputy director for our Department of Environmental Management. So blessed to be here this evening because I only have a short drive home tonight. But unlike my coworkers, my boss in the back, Ramsey Mansour, he is the director of DEM. He has 45 plus years of wastewater, solid waste experience. Um, and he also lives in Kona, so good luck with that drive tonight. <laughs> um, we have Peter Sir here. He's our right hand person in the office. He's the one that gets you those notices in your mail and tries to do a good job with getting you guys informed and posting things on the website so you guys can have an understanding of the most recent information. We also have Celise Lam. She's our project coordinator. Um, she's amazing. She just joined our team and we're blessed to have her. She's also driving from Kona. She can spend the night over my house though if she needs to. <laughs> and then we have Kelly. Kelly Hartman, she's our project coordinator and she's been with us since the beginning. She's really uh, been able to fast track our um, milestones, make sure that we're not missing any. As most of you are aware, we're under administrative order of consent to complete this project. Um, and we've met all milestones thus far, knock on wood. So it's, it's important that when we have these meetings, if you guys don't have questions at this meeting, but it comes to you later, we have staff and resources that are available to take your questions at any time. You can go to our website. You can also reach out to Peter. I have my telephone number at the end of the slides. You can also do that. We really need the input from the community. It's important. EPA wants us to, to make sure that we um, collaborate with the community. They're fully understanding of the options. Um, they have an opportunity to fill out the survey to see what their preferred option is. So please take advantage of that. We really want to hear what you guys um, want to do, with your preferred options. And this is a learning curve for some of you. A lot of some of you don't even know what an IWS is which is individual wastewater system. And that's okay, because who wants to know about that stuff unless you have to? So we're gonna go through some slides to kind of break it down for you. But um, feel free if you have questions during the presentations, just raise your hand, because sometimes if you wait till the end, you forget what you're gonna ask. So just raise your hand. Um, and then afterwards, we'll have time for questions. And we'll also have time in the back of the room to find out where your property is. If you have any questions on whether you're hooked up to the gang accessible or you're just an additional home that's been afforded the opportunity to be part of this AOC movement. So, okay, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the presentation if that's okay. Do you have any comments at this point or questions? Mark Grant, where's you at? Oh, Mark, hiding behind the person in the front row. Oh. Mark Grant, he's the man. He's our project coordinator for this, this project. He's been working just endlessly on this project, making sure we have schedules. And then next to him is Diana. Melon Lacey, she is our corporation counsel. And then in the back of the room, we have EPI, um, both Liz and our uh, Cress from, um, he, if you might remember him or see him, he did all of the, um, the testing in yards that were happening around Pahala and Nalehu. So they've been an amazing asset to our team. Um, okay, I think we got everybody. Thank you, Celise. They were trying to hide from me, but got them. <laughs> All right, so this evening, this is our Nalehu Large Capacity Cesspool Closure Meeting, um, Environmental Information Document and Preliminary Engineering Report. So we'll go over what those documents are. They're intertwined. We need both of them to make an educated decision on what's best for this community. So we want your input on both. And as you can see, our tonight's agenda, purpose of the meeting is, of course, to get your feedback, to go over the options, um, cesspool closure milestones for Nalehu. Um, we're going to recap the treatment alternatives, um, feedback 
the different treatment alternatives options described within the preliminary engineering report. And just to let you know, the preliminary engineering report we're going to have at the Nali the Library is also online. It's a pretty lengthy report, I think close to 100 pages. Um, so you guys can check it out on the library, um, go online if you want to um, borrow one from our office. And of course, I live in Pahala, so you can always run over to Cisco's house too. <laughs> Cisco, thank you for joining us. Everybody probably knows Cisco Villa. He is um, lives in Pahala as well, and he works for our wastewater division. He's he is the main guy up there. So, all right. So we're gonna do an overview of the environmental information docu document, next steps, and then we're gonna leave a lot of time um, or as much time as you need for questions and answers. And like from our meetings in Pahala, we kind of learned that a lot of the questions came afterwards when we were at the maps looking. So that's fine. And also we have calls and things. So whatever you're more comfortable with, um, use that option to get your questions answered. Okay, purpose of the meeting. Um, the general overview of the environmental information document and to seek community members participation during the development of what we call the EID. Um, it's important not only for the people that are connected to the gang cesspool and those homes that have options to under the AOC, but also just public in this community um, to have an opportunity to voice their concerns or questions that they have regarding the environmental information document. Um, we also allow the community members and opportunities to solicit oral and written. And also if there's any groups that you guys um, wanted to let us know about that may want to be informed about the environmental document. I think we've got some of the groups, OKKs, civic group, and things like that. I think we've got a majority of the KU based groups. But if you feel like there's a group that we want to solicit, just tell Peter and he can get that, um, he can get that personal letter to them. This has also been published in the newspaper and on our website. So we expect to get some feedback from others. Okay, are we good so far? Everybody can hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the feasibility evaluation report, these are our closure milestones. Um, 60 days after the AOC execution date, we finished that, we met that, um, that deadline. The preliminary engineer report was due 300 days after that was approved, what we call the FER. So that was met, and here we are at the environmental information document. Um, and so we're doing great as far as the milestones. Um, we have some pretty big hurdles in front of us. We've got to get through potentially an EA process. Um, we need to get the surveys back. That'll be very instrumental until we know what direction to go for these communities, um, both Pahala and Nalego. Um, the implementation plan is due 30 days after our EAD. So these things kind of go chronologically. So as we finish one milestone, we roll into the next milestone, the clock starts to tick for that one. So, so far we're doing great, knock on wood. We have met all um, our milestones and we continue to push forward to try to meet the closure of the large capacity gang cesspool um, no later than December 31st, 2027. So we're gonna take a few minutes just to go over the different options. Um, option number one is a centralized package plant with new sewer collection system. For some of you that look new in the audience, um, the plan prior was the big lagoons. If you guys remember, you guys may be new to the community. The sewage treatment plant is a different option. It's a smaller footprint, much smaller footprint. Um, we, we have the land that's located um, if anybody knows where the old branch headquarters is, way behind the shopping center, um, there's a parcel that there's an easement on that parcel to do a sewage treatment plant. Um, so that's that's secure already. Um, and so it'll be out of sight. Um, and it, the system number one has the new collection system. And many of us that live in the communities, we understand that the, the old collection line is quite old, the plantation has been gone for many of years, and there's been little to no uh, replacement and repairs on those lines. So we don't know the condition of them. So this first option is a sewage treatment plant with a whole new collection line system. 
And then later we can get, go in the back of the room, although I don't think the maps are blown up for Nalehu, but we can discuss exactly where those lines, those collection lines will be. Okay, option number two is the package treatment plant, but it will be with the existing sewer collection system. And again, it's unknown the condition of this, that collection system. So you need to be thoughtful when you make your selection on these things, you know, what option you want and make it, make us make an educated selection for yourself. Maybe it might make sense to have the destruction once in the community rather than have to go back and do some repairs later. So those are the two options. Like there's no difference in one and two, except for one has the new collection system and two, we're using the old collection system lines that currently you, you're, you're the, hooked up to the gang cesspool. You already have those lines in place. Can I ask what shopping center you're talking about? Uh, I think we only have one, but not only who's shopping center. Right here. Oh, but it's way behind. There's an old ranch headquarters. Some of you probably know where that's at. Yeah. It's in vacant land back there. Thank you. I found that there was another shopping center that sneaked up on me. I was like, hey, you haven't been to Nali for a little. Okay. <laughs> Got excited there. Okay, option three is the individual wastewater system. We call and refer to that as the IWS. Not a lot of people are familiar with that system. It doesn't just mean septic, it could mean multiple options of individual wastewater system. And that usually depends on your lot size, what kind of uh, elevation you have, what kind of obstacles you have in your yard will they determine which individual wastewater system will work for you. But it is like this picture, this is a typical septic system. A lot of them are septic systems. Um, there's a lot of disturbance under the ground, but once everything's put back, you basically see a, a cap that they can pump out of. Normally they're pumping, if you take care of your system, five to 10 years, it could be longer than that, but um, it, it, it's a long um, lasting IW, individual wastewater system. Again, depending on your lot and what kind of challenges you have in your lot, it'll determine what kind of system that will be. But this is kind of how it looks. And there's a couple of options when we talk about the IWS. One is the county maintenance program. So if you were to choose the IWS and you say, well, I don't know how to maintain it. I don't want to bother calling to get it pumped when it needs to get pumped or if there's any issues. The county, under this program, the county would handle the maintenance. So you would just do like you do now with the gang accessible. You call Cisco, you drive by his house, not just your Okay. That's what we do now. We don't do that. You will call our office during working hours. Um, we have a hotline as well, but you'll call and you'll place that call saying, hey, I'm having problems and the county will maintain that system. So that's that option number three. And as you can see, before we go, you can see how it looks under the ground. And then once they cover it up, very visibly pleasing, you can only see the cap covers. And some people even cover up the cap so they don't even see those, but that's how it looks once it's covered up. Okay, option number four is again, both of these options are individual wastewater systems, which could be septic, it could be another form of individual wastewater sub, um, systems. Um, one is the operating permit county project. So the county would come in and get the contractor be that contractor on site to direct the work with the individual contractor. Um, the other is the voucher system. And that kind of it seems to work um, for many communities with the housing program. And what that means is you hire the contractor that you want and they have a voucher. So as long as it's a certified contractor that's licensed to do um, cesspool or these kind of constructions, then you hire them, you manage them, we pay for them with a the voucher. And so those are the two options. The voucher system will make it much faster because as you can see with a government agency, we hire one contractor, it's gonna take a while to get through the community. Um, whereas if individuals have the options of hiring their contractor, they can have multiple contractors um, 
from all over, from whoever they choose. It could be that builder. And we have some good contractors in code, so. So those are the two options. We'll kind of go through these. You guys can raise your hands if you have any questions. Go ahead, sir. Uh, sorry, the microphone behind you, sir. That way everybody can get a benefit of hearing. Do these individual wastewater systems, do they include like composting toilets or anything like that? Or what do they encompass? Ramsey? Yeah, these are only for disposal, not for actual storage. It's just going to be dumped up from the application to the so it's not like it's like a cost. It's just treat your incident. Okay. Can anybody hear me? Do you want me to repeat or did you guys hear what I said earlier? So the IWS stands for Individual Waste Water System. So it counts like a tent with two compartments. It's hooked up to your lateral. So and your lateral is hooked up to all your, your plumbing fixtures, such as your toilet, the shower, the sinks, and everything that drains into that outlet that will be hooked up to the tent. It goes to the first compartment, and it gives it a little bit of settlement of the liquid and solids. And then it goes to the second compartment, and then it goes to a leach. So, and that's how it gets treated through dispersing the liquid through the leach. When you talk about an incinerator or compost and toilet, that's that's totally a different room. That's for you know uh, for you inside the house and you don't want to get use a flushable toilet. But it has a cure valve disposing any solids into the food. That 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 could be considered um, as an option during the cesspool conversion for people that live outside communities, like out in nowhere, um, and you don't have water system coming to your house. That could be an option by the Department of Health for perhaps compostable scenarios. You know. We cannot, I mean, you can do it tomorrow. It's your house. We don't tell you what to do inside your house. So if you want to use compostable toilet, you can go purchase it tomorrow. So well, it's up to you. But you're still charging me for sewage waste. Well, because you still have water coming into it. What are you doing with your shower? What are you doing with your sink? Well, but if you have a leash field, then, you know. Yeah, that's what Brenda was saying. So these systems, IWS, uh, there's two programs. One where the owner takes over the, the system itself, so we don't charge you. It's your system, like everybody else is within the state, right? So you don't be subject to charges. If we do the wastewater treatment plan, then you have to pay the sewer payments. So it depends on the option that you, the community, is going to select. So with the septic tank, IWS is what Brenda was talking about is too, one where the county takes over the maintenance program, but we may set certain charges for that. The other one is we issue vouchers, we get do it, and you get to own the units, and then you know be be charged, monthly charge for it. So it depends what option you get. Is there is there a, a money range of what these vouchers consist of? The voucher is just to replace to put a system on on your property, like the IWS. These ranges between um, you know maybe up to thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars a unit constructed. It'll depend on your lot challenges that you have. Yeah. But, yeah. but the county will fully. And throughout, and throughout these slides, we'll have kind of like the pros and cons for each system that might help you kind of weigh that out. Um, I'll go ahead, with, go ahead. With the IWS system, 
With the IWS, there are some smaller lots here in Nalego. Are there any provisions that go along with that if there's not adequate uh, open land on the lots for an acceptable leach field? Yeah, so we had um, EPI had went around the community, looked at all of the lots. There is maybe some challenges with Nalehu. Um, you'll have to have a different system. Maybe you won't be able to do the septic system in a wide format because you might not have enough land area, but they'll figure out a system that works on your land, um, whether it goes down deeper or what have you, feeds into your cesspool or what have you. But there is other options for the lands that have challenges with um, smaller lot sizes. We understand, especially for not later. Yes. Go ahead, Rusty. Um, I think everyone should realize that this whole process is being driven by the federal government and the environmental protection agency. And the the current process with the environmental protection agency is they are discouraging the IWS type of idea because they no longer want people to have <clears throat> individual point discharge of sewage and it doesn't meet uh, current uh, health and safety standards that the EPA has promulgated for sewage. We have an existing uh, sewer collection system that goes to the cesspool the cesspool is no longer acceptable to treat wastewater. That's what's driving this whole process. Now, uh, the county may be able to say, or, or what would the powers would be that you can go on IWS. Well, IWS will not work in the camp. The lots are way too small. You could not design a leach field big enough to triangle a house. And if you have a large family, you would have uh, you would have sewage bubbling up in your yard all the time. So the idea is, is that we should keep our sewer collection system. The question in my mind is, uh, will, there will be a lot of disruption to the camp and to people on the system when the, the county replaces the water, the sewer mains with up-to-date sewer mains. And the current way you do sewer mains is to put them down the road. And none of the sewer mains in the camp go down the road. So that means that when they put in the new collection system, the roads will be dug up. But, you know, that's a one-time deal. And to put in a, a modern collection system, we would be, you know, way ahead of the curve. You know, very few communities in, on the Big Island have a sewer collection system. And to put one modern one in and the package plant, I think is the best thing possible. It'll preserve the environment. It will save our aquifer from being polluted by sewage. Now, if we went to IWS in the camp, that means all of the aquifer below the camp to the ocean, Makai, would be polluted because sewer uh, septic tanks don't take care of a lot of waste, and one of them is, is uh, nitrates. So nitrates, when it gets into the groundwater, can cause blue baby syndrome. And so all the water going Makai would never be able to be used for anything, and especially for, agri uh, uh, for agriculture. So if a farmer, a, a rancher put in a well down below, he had poisoned his cattle. So I think that the, the central system and a new collection system is the way to go. Thank you. And of course we have, we would never allow any of our um, contractors to do anything that was contaminating, nor would, need, nor would EPA. So um, the individual wastewater systems is in compliance and does meet compliance currently, but we understand your concerns and many people have the same kind of concerns. So we appreciate your comments, Rusty, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move through some more slides, but as some things come up, please raise your hand. And we're just asking that you use the mic, even if you have a loud voice, because we are recording this for people that haven't been able to make it to the meeting. 
as well as our friends with EPA would like to also hear the community input as well. So we're recording this and it makes it better for the recording if you're on the mic. So thank you. Okay, great, great feedback on that. Um, okay, so important thing is we'll have some more meetings for sure. And we try to only have meetings when we have new information for you. So every time I call a meeting, it'll be because we have new information for you. I'm um, not just because we're gonna touch on the same things, but we're always available to ask same answer and ask the same questions because it, it may take a learning curve for some of you on IWS and what that means to have a sewage treatment in your community. So um, these surveys that we mailed out to you, um, they're very important. Mm -hmm. Don't answer them if you don't have enough information to answer them, but if you feel confident, Rusty has feels like he's confident in his decision, um, go ahead and turn in those surveys. It's important to us that we get community input. Um, if you have questions and on these surveys, want some detailed information, you can feel free to contact um, Mark Grant, myself, um, Ramsey, we're all available for you guys to answer questions. So we have some of these surveys we're handing out tonight. You'll also get some in the mail. Yeah, Peter, I think they've already been mailed out. So only one per household. So if you have a husband and wife that have the same TMK, only one will be counted. But if you have multiple properties that you're owner of, you can have multiple votes. And Peter answers all of our DEM emails, and here's the website. If you guys didn't grab a flyer, it's kind of good to have one. It has our contact information on there so you can give us a call at any time. But it, it'll be very important to have feedback from you on what option you prefer. Um, also important in this meeting is our environmental information document. Um, now that we have preliminary engineering report, we've also spent time on the environment, environmental information document. And this is basically just an analysis of the environmental impacts of the proposed project alternatives, including the no action alternative. The EID will describe the proposed projects, alternatives, project needs, existence, and surrounding land uses. And of course, I don't have to read all of this, but it will be also reaching out for consultation with individuals, like I mentioned earlier, not only our federal county governments, but also individual stakeholders or community organizations. So if you guys have an organization that you um, want to recommend for us to reach out to that we haven't already, please let Peter know. You can write it on your surveys as well. Um, yeah, so like I said, the preliminary entry report for Nalehu. We used to have community meetings together, Bahala and Nalehu, we're kind of on a different timeline. So Bahala preliminary engineer report is at the Bahala library. Nalehu is at the Nalehu Library. We also have the EID um, done for Bahala. It's gonna be, at, well, working on that draft. It'll be published at the Bahala. So just, if you're from Nalehu, you may wanna just be sure you read it from the Nalehu and not get those confused, but they're, they're gonna be available at the libraries for you to check out. And then it'll just show you some of the topics that are covered in the environmental um, information document. All of these things are um, taken into consideration, how this project will affect each of these elements. Um, so if you have any comments regarding how this project may affect, unfortunately, we, there's no options here. We, we have to comply with either sewage treatment plant or the IWS. And it's gonna be destruction in, in the community, either way we go, but, if we can get it complete, it will have some benefits to the homeowners. As Rusty had mentioned, the UIs will probably know in 2050, the cesspool conversion will need to be done for the entire island. There's about 55,000 individual cesspools that will have to be converted to either IWS or septic at the homeowner's cost. So you guys in the community, especially the ones that are directly hooked up to the gang cesspool, this is an opportunity for you guys to convert. You guys will be converted. If you can sell your property, it'll be a bonus to your property. It'll be in compliance. They don't have to worry about the 2050 deadline that's looming over them. 
So it, it, it'll be a, a positive. It's gonna be a heartache for the community. We understand that. We're living in a rural community. So you can stay with me when, <laughs> when Nolly is getting constructed and I'll stay with your family when Pahala is getting constructed. Um, she's, she's related to me, but it, there's no hotels right close by. So it, it's gonna be um, strategically, we'll have to figure out how it's gonna be less, the least amount of destruction for our community. But everybody understands when you, especially the narrow roads in Valley, who it's, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a headache for a while. Um, but we'll figure that out. We'll figure out how strategically we're going to lay this out so it's not a total destruction of the community while we're doing construction. So, yeah. And of course, how the community can participate during the preparation of the EID. Um, consultation letters, the notification. Tonight we're notifying you that the EID is being formulated. So this is the time to put comments in. If you guys have any comments to um, lend to us, please feel free to do that. Um, and also other community members will be notified and you can help us assist us in identifying any parties or stakeholders that you think we may have missed. All right, so our next steps for Nalehu. Um, we have um, our EID consultant uh, consultation outreach. We have secured our consultants. They're working feverishly on both Bahala and Nalehu. Um, County will be continuing the preparation of the draft EID. We'll have once we get a draft EID, we'll again come in to in front of the community. If you guys have any input or have any final input on that draft before we finalize it or put it to the EPA, in front of the EPA for their acceptance, um, you'll have an opportunity as well. Um, we're also available for individual talk stories. So if you have a neighbor and they're not here at this meeting, but you know they're hooked up to the gang cesspool, maybe they're elderly, maybe they don't just don't like to come to community meetings and they're tired after a long day's work, just let them know, maybe grab another flyer for them, let them know that we are available for individual talk stories. We can do a Zoom. I live in Pahala. Um, I can do it after work. I can come and see you guys. So there's many options. Um, I have talked about going to OKK meeting um, to discuss it with them as well. So if there is some people that you know that aren't here tonight, please let them know we're available. And it's important that they vote when those surveys come in. Um, so the future meetings will do like we have been. If you, you haven't been getting individual notices, please make sure that Peter has your correct address. But we do individual notices to the affected parties. We do a quick little calendar. Julia does a great job for us to getting it into the coop calendar, as well as on the bulletin boards. I'm gonna check and see if it's there, but we do on bulletin boards and newspaper ads as well. And of course, our website is updated. Um, we have just started to record the meetings, um, and it's just because EPA wants to see what the community feedback is, and also people that aren't able to come to these meetings, maybe they want to hear the frequently asked questions, are probably the same questions they have in their mind, and it's good for them to hear um, what the community is saying. So if you, if you feel comfortable making a choice with your surveys, you can drop it off in our box there. Don't feel rushed. We're still in the process. Um, like I said, they've been mailed to your home. So discuss it with your spouse, your household, and you can either mail it to us, um, scan it to Peter's email, or just give us a call and drop it off um, with me. We have some resources. Of course, we have our county website. Um, DEM has a YouTube channel. EPA has a website they also post because we have an administrative order of consent with EPA. They also post our, um, our items on their website as well under the Pahala and Nalehu. And of course, we have it at the Nalehu Public Library as well. So your input is very important. Um, and we're here for you. So. If you don't have any questions that you want to ask at this moment, after we stop the presentations, I'll turn on the lights. We have Max in the back of the house. We have Ramsey, our EPI specialist, Cisco, Mark. All of them are there for you to answer any uh, particular questions you have about any of the systems or your location of your lots or what have you. 
So without further ado, if anybody has any questions they want. You mentioned you're going to cover pros and cons. Are you going to talk about pros and cons for each system? Or is it? Oh. Yeah, I think it's in our next presentation, actually. Okay. Um, since there's two questions that came up, and, uh, and uh, Brenda has mentioned about pros and cons, and I think it's we have to address them so you guys understand the benefit and uh, advantage, disadvantage of each option. So, as you do your survey, at least you are cognizant and aware of the option you're going to select. The engineer report is um, is going to, is available on the website, um, but we can go quickly over over the options. We got the we got them on the wall. The different options. If you guys want, we could address it there, or we could start the discussion here as well. So with the IWS. As you have mentioned, it's um, some of the benefit is if the owner end up taking that system, you're not going to be charged the monthly fees. So, you know, whatever monthly fees that we're going to impose onto into after we finish the rate study, you won't be able to pay for it because it becomes your system under the IWS. Um, that's some of the benefit is the monthly charges. In addition, if you if you go with the wastewater system, you'll be billed monthly. I don't know how many of you now connected to the sewer or how many is not, because I guess this meeting is for the community. So all of you connected to the, to the gang school, I would imagine all of you. So you guys get in the monthly rate of you know, whatever, $48. That currently is being reviewed with a consultant. So we're coming up with a new rate um, and probably be implemented sometime next year uh, based on the study. Well, we had, we had over the last five years, we had percentage, the consumer price index, and it, that expired this year. So. We have to continue with that consumer price index okay. and look at the, the new rate to be able to subsidize the cost of living, the construction prices, everything's going up and the operation and maintenance as well. So what you pay is only cover operation and maintenance. So we're doing the study to do, to evaluate that rate. Um, so that's some of, you know, some of the major one, uh, Rusty had mentioned, waste treatment plan, collection system. Definitely it's gonna be tearing up the roads and put in the system. And we need to work with all of you to figure out, um, you know, access to your property. Um, roads are very narrow. So the disturbance probably will be the entire width of the road to be able to trench and shield. So we could be able to put the collection system so that's going to take extra coordination to make sure that you still could access your house um, and you may not during construction. So we need to figure out how we're going to, how we're going to do that. Um, but, you know, we, some of these issues are going to bring challenges um, and we need to figure out um, how we continue providing the access to your property as we do in the collection, if that's the option that you guys select. Uh, with the wastewater, it gives you a better environmental protection because you know, you're know concentrating everything all at once and then you treat it to a better level and maybe you could reuse the water. Um, septic tank also is in compliance. It meets the treatment standards. Um, so uh, it, that's why it's an option, but it'll be individually and placed onto your property. With the septic, rather than have the disturbance, uh, the opposite of the collection, rather than having the disturbance 
on the roadway where it could hinder your access to the house is going to be on your property. Uh, it depends where the location of that septic tank need to be placed. EPI had done initial study in, into their preliminary engineer report and they have identified certain areas similar to what you have mentioned, smaller lots, what we're gonna do with them. Uh, could, we, could they qualify for IWS? Um, the State Department of Health, uh, DOH, um, actually will issue a waiver of smaller lots to use that IWS. Also one of the the challenges with the IWS is the terrain as well, because the topography, right, is the gradient of the ground. So we want to make sure that we we design the leach field so to contain it within that parcel. So that's some of the challenges um, that comes with the IWS versus the the collection system. So there is definitely pros and cons, and and it really. We depend on you guys to see, you know, fill up these forms and look whatever option that you guys feel comfortable with to address your concern. We're not going to be, like I said, you know, you just seen it now. People may like compost and toilets. <laughs> People like uh, connection to sewer. So, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to satisfy 100%. But at least um, now our our goal is to give you enough education to make a sound decision, um, and hopefully you could access that preliminary report. It's complicated; it's not easy. Um, but if you, we're gonna have another meeting, multiple meetings. Uh, you don't have to fill that form now if you're not comfortable till we do the EID. Uh, report, but um, like said, um, you know, we could talk more about it as we walk through the pictures so you could visualize, um, you know, the amount of disturbance between each option because I think that's probably one of your major concerns, right? I would imagine, unless if you guys let me ask you this question what is your major concern of either option? Slide right now. Okay. That kind of yeah. So, I mean, you can see it, but I still like to hear from you. Let's say either option, what would be your register? Um, so, we're asked to fill out the survey of what it is that we, we need to, to get with this um, connection to the system. We don't know what our fees are going to be, right? What, what is it? What is that going to look like? If we do a, a new plant, a new PPD, how much are we going to miss? Current, yeah, that's a good question. Currently, the fees is $48, right? Or 52 bucks. Or 50 bucks. So the 50 bucks, it's so even though we're going to put a new system, it's a county wide rate. So you're not going to be only charged because you just got a new system. So the rate study we're doing for the entire county. So every person, you either live here or in Hilo or Calcate on the west side, they all pay the $50. So when we say we're doing the rate study, it's a countywide rate study. It's yeah, not just, it's not, just here. It's, it's not, not here. here. It's not only for it. Yes. Go ahead. Why can't we get the government to give us a grant? We are paying for all kinds of stuff that we can in our country. Why can't we get them to help us? That's a good question. Yeah, I always wonder myself. <laughs> we give it billions of dollars, but it's unfortunately that's a federal government. I cannot. <laughs> we we local government here. Um, Brenda used to be the USDA director for grants and and loans and she's trying very hard to get us as much free money as she can. But um, also, we do have monies coming in that we're gonna use for this project. It's gonna be SRF funding, which is basically from the EPA and from our federal partners. 
And we do, because our community is dis, um, considered a distressed community, Mahala and Nali, because of the income and the population, um, we are gonna have some loan forgiveness. So they are helping with this project. And like Ramsey had said, if this project costs us $10 million, $50 million, whatever that cost is, it's not gonna be put on to the users to spread that around, it's not, it's, it's separate. So everybody in the island is a rate study for the whole entire island. It's not based on how much your system costs. So you don't have to worry about that. If we do an increase, it's gonna be, Pepe Kill is gonna be paying the same rate as you guys. So that don't have to worry about that. So you guys are actually fortunate because the government is taking care of this community that's on the gang cesspool. 2050 deadline is right around the corner and it'll be homeowner's responsibility to get connected or converted to something else. Um, it's not county mandating this, it's our, the EPA, the big guys. So it's, it's for the environment, of course, we wanna do the right thing, so that's why it is. But we are fortunate, we are fortunate. And we are getting some assistance from the loan forgiveness for this community, so, but yeah, thank you. All for doing the right thing for the environment and for our wildlife and our sea life. Um, I repurpose everything. I don't let anything go into the waste that will go into our ocean or into our land, our Ina, mm -hmm. and ruin it. But I live totally on Social Security, as there are a lot of others the same way. And every time there's an increase in something. But your, your concern is the monthly fees? Pardon? Are you, is your concern the monthly fees that you'll be assessed? Yeah, unfortunately, that's the, that's the price for ownership of a property. I mean, it has to be paid. Everybody, every homeowner has to pay it. It's not heavier in this community. It's overall, these wastewater treatment plants are not cheap, have employees, we have compliance things that we need to do. So um, there may be some assistance though for um, if you're in a situation where you need, maybe you can check with EOC or HEOC. They have some programs for um, limited income families. But yeah, there's no way we can adjust that. that. That has to be paid, but there might be some programs that are helping you. We do have a program with HCOC right now. And if you have um, some back balances or delinquencies with our wastewater, they are offering grants right now. Um, so check in with our, if you do have a delinquency, check in. There's some, and also what they're offering now is even if you don't have a delinquency, but you're struggling they were offering paying forward. So if you're in that scenario, there's other agencies that can help you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so we, um, Kelly and Peter were able to find this advantages and disadvantages. It looked like it made it into your booklet, but definitely um, we will get this into the booklet and maybe send it to each of the participants that came in tonight. This is important because it'll have Option one, two, three, and four, A and, A and B, and we'll have the different um, pros and cons. And so just going through that, you can see option one meets the requirements, close large capacity accessible. All these options, of course, will do that. So they all have the check mark. Meets requirements to protective human health and the environment. All of them meet the compliance. As Rusty has indicated, some feel like the, the treatment, the wastewater treatment plant is the better option for the environment, but all are in compliance currently. Um, lower capital cost. So options one and two are gonna be a big, a big weight on the county um, to get those installed. Um, options three, four, and four A, um, much less, but also costly for the county, but they're much less than the sewage treatment plant with the new infrastructure. Um, least disruption to existing homes. Um, option two, because most of the collection lines are in, although we don't know what condition they're in. So they're gonna be, there's gonna be analysis to, to check the condition of those existing lines. It may require some replacement. So that, that could change to, um, more disruption, but currently there's existing collection system lines in. Probability of meeting implementation deadline. IWS, there's a strong possibility that we could meet the deadline just because of the different options that we have in front of us. Um, 
the voucher system, for instance, all of you guys go out and get your own contractor, work with them individually, um, be the project manager on site, county would still pay for it and have to be a licensed contractor, of course, but you can see how that would um, speed up the process, right? Instead of having it under a government agency where we have maybe one or two contractors. Okay, um, re reliability for years to come. The sewage treatment plan, of course, if we're changing out the new collection lines, you know, it's going to be a long, long time before that will have to be replaced. Um, the only one that's not checked on this one is going to be option two because we don't know the condition of the existing collection line. Uh, county responsibility of operation of maintenance. Um, we have um, one, two, as you remember, options one and two are the sewage treatment plan. One has the new collection system. The other one has the existing. Both of them will county will maintain. Um, the option with the IWS where the county does the maintenance will be assessed a fee per month, but you have a problem, you go to Cisco's house, ring the doorbell at two o'clock in the morning, he will be out there. Um, I have a dog outside, so you guys can't do that to me. But no, you, you'll call in your trouble trouble call and they'll come out and maintain that one for you. Um, and so, where was I left off at? Okay, so the county responsible for operation of maintenance. So um, the first three and then the last two options, of course, is the voucher system and the one that the government, the county um, contracts the contractor, but the system will be yours. You won't be charged a monthly fee. It'll be yours. You'll take care of it every five to 10 years. You may have to pump it. Um, that'll be your system, but the county will pay for that system to be installed. Um, county will restore the disturbed areas due to construction. Um, so all of the options here, I'm not sure why 4A is not marked. Mark. 4A, the county will restore disturbed areas due to construction. 4B, I mean. Even if it's not the county, we'll still pay the contractor that's due. Yeah, it'll still be covered by the county voucher. So either way, either the county will be restoring your property. It has to be permitted things that we can restore. Um, but either way, your property will be back to the way it looked before. So for instance, if we have to dig up some of your driveway, we'll restore that and what have you. So grass, everything will be put back into place. That last option will be the voucher system. So you're going to be the project manager on site for your own property. You're going to make sure the contractor puts your property back into the position that it was before and make sure that that's included in his invoice so he can get paid for it. Okay, um, but no monthly sewer fees for the county. Um, those last two options, when you have the IWS um, using the voucher or the government, but you take over that system once it's paid for and installed on your property, um, you won't have any monthly fees. You'll be required to pump that system every five to 10 years. I think they were very conservative on the preliminary engineer report saying three years, but um, most people that have dealt with IWSs, it's, it's a long time before you have to pump that. So, but on the preliminary engineer report, it said three years. So you just have to accommodate that um, expense. Okay, so on this one, existing systems surpassing life expectancy requiring continuing repairs and rehabilitation. Of course, like we said, option number two is the unknown. We don't know the condition of the collection lines that are existing, but all the other systems will be brand new. So they'll be good condition. High capital costs, the sewage treatment plant will be the most expensive for the government. Um, as you know, we're going to have to do all of the collection lines, the infrastructure, um, setting up the plant, what have you. Lack of a capacity for systems expansion, option two for sure. Um, the collection lines were built for the existing gang cesspool homeowners that are hooked up to it. 
So if we try to hook up more people in the community, there, there will be an issue with that. So it, it will, that will limit the capacity. Probability of not meeting implementation deadline. Um, if we go to the sewage treatment plant, there's gonna be a, many obstacles that we can't have control over. Getting the sewage treatment plant shipped over to Hawaii, uh, availability of materials, availability of contractors, those things um, were out of our control. Um, however, you know, we're gonna do our best and we've been doing our best um, to push forward with all of the milestones thus far. Okay. Um, Continuation access for community maintenance personnel onto private property. So option two, if you guys are familiar with the current collection system, gosh, it just, it goes everywhere, right? Underneath your house, in the back of your house, the side of your house. With the new collection line, we're gonna have it strategically going directly from your house to the easement, right? If there's a maintenance issue, It'll be, a, it'll be something where we don't have people climbing underneath your houses and digging up your driveways to get to, it's gonna make sense. When the plantation did these houses, of course, they thought the plantation would be here forever. So we're all big, one big happy family. So, you know, what's, what's it if a maintenance workers have to climb underneath your house or what have you? Um, so anyway, that's the, collect, the old collection system will have um, different problems with that, so. And then um, option three, if you have, if you select the IWS and you still want the county to do the maintenance, you're going to have to allow them access onto your property to do that maintenance. Whereas the other options with IWS, it'll be your system. You have control over who comes onto your property when they come onto your property and what have you. Okay, Dis disruption of resident roads and properties due to construction. Sorry guys, <laughs> whatever option we choose, there's gonna be some disruption. So like I said, we're gonna try to do it strategically, rip it off like a band-aid, get it done so we can have a nice long system for ever and always for our children and their children. Uh, legal compliance issues, um, just because option one and two, we know it's gonna take longer. Uh, we may be outside of the EPA deadline. We'll be at the leniency of EPA to ask for an extension due to circumstances beyond our control. Um, but that that be something that we'll have a conversation with them about. Uh, homeowner to maintain IWS setbacks for roots and structures. Um, those last three options with IWS, that would be all. the homeowners or the IWS will have these certain setbacks um, with an IWS system. You can't have any permanent infrastructure built upon those systems, but you can have like temporary parking of your cars and things like that on there, but not permanent infrastructure that's, that's um, built on that. So it may restrict some of your use for your property if you're planning on building an, on a home, what have you. Now, Lehu, I think your lots are so small, I don't think that would be an issue, but some of you have fully built out your lots that have a lot of pavement and things on the property, so there will be some setbacks um, requirements with the IWS. Um, homeowners responsible for system maintenance, routine, monitoring, and reporting to the county. Those last two options with IWS will be charged that monthly fee. Um, you will be required, like, any other person that has IWS on the, in the community, Department of Health requires you to maintain that system um, and make sure that it's in compliance. Um, so you'll do that self-reporting and monitoring of your own system. Increased maintenance activities, um, vehicle traffic, pumping, operational noises, maintenance personnel presence, um, whatever system you have, especially during construction, all of that will be happening after construction. The only time you would be happy with the IBWS if, we're, if you have to pump or if there's a maintenance issue. Again, the sewage treatment plant, once the, the collection, the brand new collection lines are installed, knock on wood, there won't be any issues for a long time. Um, but, that, but it could be, and those are the options that all of the options could have. Um, 
maintenance activities, especially during construction, all of them will. Is that the last page of pros and cons? Okay, great. Thanks for finding me that. I'm not sure how it didn't make the package, but yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Director, you had mentioned that you wanted the concerns uh, for for the various options. The the folks that I talked to, okay, okay, the, okay, the, the folks that I had talked to overwhelmingly, their concerns were economic related. So we had a nice conversation earlier, and I think that kind of panned out with you know some of the conversation. Uh, thank you about talking about how the the sewer fees were determined. So I guess that really leads to my main question of. Up here, it, it, it highlights the high high operational and maintenance costs for options one and two. Is there an estimate of what the county's operational maintenance expenses are going to be? Your monthly sewer fees will cover the full amount. So the fee that you being charged now kind of cover that whole amount. We do in this study to um, reevaluate the O&M sure. and include the consumer price index and other cost of living adjustments. So that technically the monthly is gonna be adjusted. Um, we don't have an idea of how much it's gonna be, um, but definitely it's gonna be, re we're not gonna go crazy on the number. Uh, we need to be, reasonable as well to our constituents. If we need to increase the cost over the next 10 years to make it easier so we don't have to, you know, charge it all at once. So the idea is we're doing the study and we're doing a lot of analysis. Um, we call them CAC planning, which is facility planning for each of our facilities, waste streamer facilities, because that cost pretty much covers all the o and for our maintenance, our collection through our operators, our wastewater division to be able to, to be able to stay in compliance. So we're not profit driven. So the actual cost of service, that's what's going to be divvy up among our constituents. Certainly yeah, that, all that is, that's good stuff. Absolutely. But like, what would be, if you have a handle an idea of what would be the increased annual O and M for the additional yeah. plan? This project costs twenty million dollars in revenue. It's oh, not going to be spread. It's not going to be spread down on the users of this community. That's a separate thing. You're only going to be doing that in a rate set for the entire island. So sure. it's fifty-two now. No, he knows that. I, I think to O and M, and it's it's not cheap. You know, currently, uh, our current budget for the department is about 16, 16 million dollars. So most of it covers staff, all of it covers the staffing, what have you. So I'll give you an example. Maui is about $90 a month. City and county, Oahu is about $120 a month. We charge $52 a month. So it's gonna go up. How much is gonna go up? We don't want to study to evaluate. So the, for that 16 million, how many treatment plants do we have on the board? We have about a total of seven. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, the PER has the life cycle, the 30 year life cycle on the one cost for the different options. One but this three. option, we're talking about the rate studies. Yeah, the rate studies are different, but yeah. overall, for the one and 30, 30 year life cycle. So the way the county is set up here, you're not going to be charged for O&M of just this facility because it's going to be way expensive. So the O&M as for the county rate study is the county wide. That's for the people that get in the service. So um, you know, I have a sizable. I don't pay anything, but when I connect to the sewer, I'm going to be paying my sewer fees. Um, if I go IWS, I don't have to pay for it. So as simple as that. Maybe we should go with option one. And right now in my yard, I have to have this rubbish under the ground. That's easy to do. 
system was being changed. Okay, if we should go with option one, and right now in my yard, I have like a plastic container that they put in way back when. If you go with option one, is it still gonna be using that barrel in my yard? It was supposed to be with the pump if we went as years back. So yeah. my question is, is it gonna be not used, a new system? Yes, option one is actually, Go back to show the sewer connection in the slides. Um, option one. Yeah. So option one is actually they bring in a sewer line from your house through a trench with a four inch all the way to the street. I think the containers you're talking about, uh, it was done under C Brewers, my understanding to create a small holding tank for each house. They call it low pressure system. So the idea is you still have a container, your wastewater goes into that container, get it grinded up, it goes through a pump, and it gets pumped through a short, smaller sword line that goes to a treatment facility. That also could be considered part of option one if, if that low pressure system get the installation uh, rather than the conventional gravity system. So uh, the pumps are here. I mean, they bought them when they put the tank. What year was that? It's, it's, yeah. So I don't know even if the 100 or 200 pumps we have, Cisco, I don't know the status. They're probably, uh, you know, technology have changed, but if we go with the low pressure system, you know, that tank could be used. So we have to draw them the pump, but the disadvantage with that, then you have to pay the electricity for that pump in addition to the sewer rate. So, I mean, this is the challenge, you know, option one, you guys need to, we need to be transparent with you. Option one, it's gonna cost the monthly rate. And if we go with that low pressure system, because you already have a container, that means we have to drop, hook, you, hook your house to it, and we have to drop in a small pump to grind the waste. And um, it's gonna be higher maintenance because our guys, I mean, think about it. No, I mean, if we have, yeah. I'm my house. I know, I know. My house is like a switch, they have to connect them. I know. They put the container, but they don't put this, the line in the street. Yeah. So it, it was like. I mean, it's not only my yard, it's like all the houses on the bottom yeah. of the street. Yeah. It was the only way to convince the county to take over the system. It was like, okay. here, here's a piece of county, really, take it over. Living in my yard yeah. or nothing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's unfortunate. Yes. But that's a good point, though. Yeah. There's no family in the yard on the bottom <laughs> side of the road. It's good to know. I mean, if you go with the new system, you're not going to use that anymore, right? I mean, it still could be under option one if we end up doing the low pressure system. I mean, it'll be less disturbance in the road because it's only three feet deep, and you put a smaller pipe. But the challenge with that is every house is going to have a pump and electrical panel. It's going to be hooked up to your electrical. So it's going to add to your electrical cost. But I mean, that was one of the options because I think that was the intent from C. Brewers when they tried to convey the property to the county. It was like, hey, good gesture from them, but they never, I mean, it just. So, folks, I may have assessment if you option one or and are you guys if you're not going to utilize it then will it be removed from every household every every property that's listed there because i think the majority of the properties were done in 2009 so what's there you're going to make that determination if it's going to be removed or going to be utilized well the community is going to make the determination based on the form we gave you right so if if you guys select if you guys select option one based on the majority, then yes, we need to 
if we put the conventional, we'd probably take these stats out. Yeah, it depends on the options left. So, and we need to. Well, once you guys tell us what option, then we need right. to start designing that option. But as of now, we have not designed any. Um, so once you guys fill up these four and tell us what your preferred option, then based on the majority, then we direct our consultant to start designing. Um, I like that, like you're correct that assessment you know, even under option one, that assessment will still have to be determined on which houses those low pressure systems can be eliminated, which houses you would still have to remain, depending on the depth of the gravity sewer line within the roadway and the topography of your lot. So yeah. that assessment is still to, to be determined if option one is a selected or open. It's all I need your hand. <laughs> All I have, you guys tell us what you want. We go back and start designing it. I will make it happen. I mean, yeah, I, the, you know, we're going to pay for whatever system you guys select. Uh, any other question? Hopefully, it was clear. I hope. We did what we need to do. Uh, talk to your neighbor. Please let him know that we need to fill out this form. Put the word out because it's very important that we get enough some of, enough forms back so we could make a sound decision. Is any of my staff or Diana, you guys want to say anything? Have we missed anything? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. We'll be our staff will be here for a little while. So if you have any questions, please find us. Also, help yourself to some refreshments. We have drinks in that big cooler. Um, help yourself to make the cooler a little bit lighter when I take it home. Thank you.